Setting up a Durrani NVR when it's first connected. Uh, so the default password is going to be 123456, which we can enter. So you'll notice here when we've uh, connected the NVR, as long as the cameras are connected correctly, the images will show up on the screen here. I've only got the one plugged in, but if you had obviously all four or eight plugged in, that would all show up on the screen here for you. Okay, so enter. So that is just the default password. It's going to ask you to uh, put in an enhanced password for security. So the old password we've got here. And then we're just going to put in a new password. Now we need to meet the certain criteria that are down here. And effectively this must go strong. So we'll just type in a password. And that there is strong. So that's right to go. And we're just going to have to repeat. It's also going to ask for an email depending on the software version you have. If this isn't on your screen, don't worry about it. Uh, we can do this in later. It's always recommended to leave it ticked. But this is just a recovery email uh, in case you need to get your password or if you've forgotten password, things like that. And it just helps identify that the NVR does actually belong to you if you need to do a password reset. So this has got to be the end user's password. This isn't the uh, installer's password. So this is the owner of the NVR. I've missed a Dean Durrani there, but that's okay, just for an example. And hitting okay. So it's gonna ask you if you want to change the admin password for all the cameras that are connected to the NVR. It's always recommended to do this. Um, it gets them away from the one, two, three, four, five, six, the, the standard password. So we'll just hit okay. Hit yes. Now again, um, if this doesn't show up in your firmware version, that's okay. Um, this won't be here, but we can do this later. Hitting okay. So it's gonna ask for an unlock pattern. So this is just an easy way, um, instead of using your password every time, you can choose to not show it again, skip, and it won't ask you again. Otherwise, draw it twice, and in you go. So that'll get you into the startup wizard, which is the very basics um, of the setup of the MVR. So four quick steps purely just to get it up and running. There are a few more things that should be checked when the system's installed though. So pretty straightforward here setting the time and date. And then we go next. Now if yours is connected via an ethernet cable to your router, so it's connected to your LAN, we wanna make sure that the enable DHCP is ticked. It is as default. And this here is your IP address. This needs to be on the same range as your router. Now this automatically does it, the MVR does it by itself. Um, as long as there's no restrictions or anything on, on your router. So really nothing that should have to be changed on this page here. So next we've got the QR code. The one on the left over here, scan this one with your phone. That will take you to either the Play Store or um, the App Store where you can download the Durrani IP Viewer app. So once you've downloaded the app and uh, gone through, created an account and set everything up, this is the QR code that you use to scan it onto your phone. There is another video running through all this exactly. And then once that's finished, that there will be on your mobile phone. So quickly next. The recording schedule is quite important. Uh, so as default, every camera is set up to record motion, motion only. All right, just increases uh, the recording time of your hard drive that's installed. So we can choose to change this um, normal. So if we select it, normal there is 24 hour recording. So we can choose times, dates, anything like that there. And this is setting for camera one. And we can also just copy that to all cameras. So if you're gonna be setting up um, things like line crossings, intrusion detections, uh, human body detection, audio, depending on the cameras that you've got, you wanna change it from motion to minimum event. So event will record all those VCAs, all those special features, and will also obviously record motion as well, but it does back up those um, special features so you can play them back or view them later on. So selecting event, we can just change it to event, any part of it or all of it if we like. 
and again okay and we can choose to copy that to all cameras once that's all finished uh, it's going to ask you if you want to switch to the best image quality that's available um, recommend you just do this it just gives a better better output so it's auto negotiating with that HDMI cable and that's just giving me the better picture there so as you can see I've just got the one camera going at the moment and the time and date does sync to what you have set up in the startup wizard so that's the very basics now uh, more should be done when you're setting up the NVR so we'll quickly run through so if we right click the mouse and we can go into menu and we seem to have a quick run through of some of the extra settings that should be done when you're originally setting up the NVR okay so cameras they're all going to be here for you um, if they're connected you're going to get a blue uh, play button so you can select that and we'll show you what camera is what there so encoding we can go into quickly go into encoding I've only got camera 4 connected and from here we can change some basic settings I always recommend the video compression goes to 265 it just increases the recording time without affecting any uh, image quality at all so um, it's just a, a new format of encoding uh, highly recommend all cameras just go to 265 and then on screen display what we can do is we can name these cameras to be whatever you want front back uh, my ones are sitting on my desk as a demonstration so whoops and this is helps you search in playback things like that uh, what all the cameras are and we'll just apply that and we can choose to show it on the screen if we like or not and if we apply it we'll see it pop up on the screen down there and we can move them around as well if we like but where it puts it is normally pretty solid so that's it done there uh, image if you really want to go in and start playing with the image uh, we can have a bit of a muck around in here it's all generally preset to be at its best for most conditions but if you need to have a bit of a tweak you just go in through here and move around some of the settings to suit your image or suit your environment a bit better Uh, privacy mask uh, we can just mask out some cameras um, take out certain parts so if you're looking over a neighbor's fence we basically need to be able to remove certain parts of that camera so we can add an area and just block them out which means they won't get recorded so I'm not going to apply because I don't need that on there but that's just a feature of that camera there oops so back into the menu so the VCAs there is another video on setting up the video analytics which are all the line crossings intrusions so you can set those up if you choose uh, networking um, this is the page that you see in the startup wizard and that is the other page you see in the startup wizard so those two there if you if you miss them in the startup wizard you can find them just there nothing else you need to do here for the basic setup so importantly from the system menu we need to set the time so under the time settings you'd notice this is set up in the uh, startup wizard now that's a generic clock effectively worldwide clock so what we need to do is uh, just make sure the daylight savings time and auto updates are set so enabling the auto update we need to put in the server address uh, so a server that's good to use in Australia is uh, au dot pool dot ntp dot org So if we pop that in there, um, the port's always going to be 123, so that doesn't change. And you can select how often you want it to talk to that server and get the time. Default is 10 minutes, doesn't hurt to leave it at that. And hit apply. So that there will make sure that the time stays current every 10 minutes on the Australian time server. So you see it's just clicked over there. Also very importantly, depending on your location, you need to set the daylight savings time as well. Because uh, this is set effectively for world clock. <clears throat> so in Melbourne, uh, Queensland obviously a little bit different, but in Melbourne, we need to enable the day daylight savings time. So we need to put a tick in there. Now daylight savings in Melbourne runs from October through to April. So from October, the first Sunday at 2 a.m. to April, the first Sunday at 2 a.m. And the clock swings back an hour. So just need to make sure all that there is set and apply. So the time sync is already done for the cameras. So that means the NVR and the cameras have been exactly the same time. That assists greatly, obviously, in playing back uh, footage on the NVR.
So as I said it from the start, make sure auto update is enabled. And there's one of your servers and daylight savings as well. Uh, in system here, uh, you can add users if you like, if you need to edit users normally. Go. So basically um, you can choose what features you wanna, uh, what, what permissions they have for, for each person, whether they can figure upgrade or just view and export um, and what cameras have got access to. So we can just add a user as, as you need. Security, there's nothing in there that you need to change. That's all for advanced use. Um, now for backup, uh, that there, uh, backing up footage, there is another video on that, which you can have a look at on backup and storing uh, footage onto a USB stick. One of the important ones is under storage. It's just to make sure that your hard disk is definitely on and recording. So you notice this schedule, that's what was in the startup wizard that we've set. So we can make changes to that in here. But very important, we have a look at the hard disk and just make sure it's actually there. So we wanna know that the total is the size of the hard drive. So two terabyte gives you 1863, plus the, obviously the operating system of the hard drive. If nothing is listed there, um, sometimes you need to actually format the hard drive. And they do generally come uh, pre-formatted or they all do come pre-formatted. So it all depends on the startup. Um, sometimes sometimes that might not be, be on as default. So basically all we need to do is select it and format. So if I select that now and hit format, it'll format and you'll see my free space go up there. All right. So this is a very important thing to check in the startup just to make sure that the hard drive is definitely going because that's the whole point of the CCTV to make sure that it is recording. And then in alarm, just make sure that your motion is 100% activated. All right. So just need to make sure the red squares are on the screen and motion is ticked as well. So if we clear all, what we're gonna notice here is when I move, there's no trigger for it there. All right, so if I go full screen, what we're gonna see now is when I move my hand, we'll get that motion trigger and that motion there will be recorded. So from here, you can change the sensitivity as well if you need to, but very important, you just make sure the motion is on for each of the cameras. So you choose which cameras you've got and just make sure it's all checked. So these are things that's, that are preset in the MVR, but always smart just to go through and just basically make sure everything is working there. Also a good one to check uh, when you first connect an MVR, like anything that you get nowadays that connects to the internet, generally there's an upgrade available. Um, so it's always recommended you go and check uh, for new firmware that might be available. So everything is on the cloud as well. So you can just download it directly off the cloud server and onto your system. So from here, just having a look at the upgrade and we can have a look at the NVR and IPC. So we see here on the cloud, that's my current version. I can check for an update. And it will let you know. So it says my current version is the latest. If there is a new one, it'll be written here and then you'll get that option there to upgrade down the bottom. So that there will highlight and you'll be able to upgrade. So same with the camera. We can just check, put a tick in there, it checks them all and we can check for an update. So nothing's popped in there. So that is the latest version. So if there was a new one, it would pop up in here for the latest version and give you the option there to cloud upgrade here. Okay. So once that is done, uh, that's the effective setup of the NVR. Now it's always good to go and just check your playback to make sure it is 100% working. So if we right click and go into playback and we just select my camera. And what we'll see up the top is a red triangle. I'll move the cursor. A red triangle where there is recording. It's always important, obviously the whole point of the CCTV is to have it record and you wanna make sure that's working correctly. So if we highlight it, we then can just go in and have a look at that camera and just to make sure that it has been recording. So that was me moving my hand just before as a demonstration. So it is working, is working fine on motion. Not a problem there. So if we go in and have a bit of a look, that's just a recording it's done for me just moving my hand around. So this MVR is recording properly. We've gone through and had a look at all the basic settings of it. Um, there are plenty of other videos uh, on our website at durani.com.au under the technical support page where you'll find uh, heaps of information about any features or settings that you need to set up on your NVR. Alternatively, you're more than welcome to contact us at uh, support at durani.com.au if you shoot us an email there with any questions, we'll get back to you as quick as we can and I'll be able to sort anything out for you. 
So in addition to the startup wizard, these are the things that really do need to be checked just to make sure the MVR is operating correctly.